So we've gone three levels now. When do we know we're done? How many levels can we go until we're complete with the patient? Well, one of the things you do is you keep checking GB20. If GB20 remains open, and it still is in her case, then you keep going. Usually it's three to four supplements, sometimes five, and you'll have five levels balanced on that hierarchy of the brain. If you get five levels balanced and you find five specific things to fix five problems, different problems, chances are you found hormetic nutrients. You found nutrients that are going to have a wide ranging effect on the whole body. GB20 is going to close and uh, other problems that may be there that they may have listed on their health assessment are probably going to be taken care of by what you've already found. And then you'll be able to, as the more you do this work, the more you'll be able to tell them, oh yes, the cramping issue that you get at nighttime, that's often related to an adrenal problem, uh, the fight or flight response, a need for potassium or magnesium or calcium. We already found those on you, so that cramping should be dealt with as well. And you can go right down the list, and sure enough, those things do get better. And when you fix the main things that the body needs fixed, all the incidentals get fixed as well. So we've got three levels. Let's find a fourth level. Let's see if our liver is finally going to show up here. And in fact it does. Hoorah! Green people, the liver usually shows up. Uh, now, liver in a green person, and I mentioned earlier that magnesium is their mineral. Let's just jump ahead here. Instead of going through all the things we could do with liver at the moment, let's jump ahead and see if magnesium shows up. Look down and to the left for me. And it doesn't. So in most people, most greens, you're going to find magnesium. In this patient, that's not the case. So let's check all the other possibilities with the liver. Now liver does all sorts of detoxifying for us. It does things like acetylation, sulfation, glucuronidation. Uh, we want to check all of those different pathways. So we want to look for sulfur. And we want to look for things related to B5 and acetyl-CoA. And uh, we want to look for other detoxifying agents and things that help produce glutathione. Remember, glutathione is made from three amino acids, cysteine, glutamine, and glycine. So all of these things are in our realm of possibilities with the liver. Uh, as you do this more and more, you'll get to know your patients pretty well, and, and you'll get to start to see patterns among green people, and you can find shortcuts to things, and you can jump ahead to certain nutrients uh, that you know probably are the most likely things that'll be there. But in this case, we'll go step by step so we show you all the, all the pieces. So let's try the glucuronidation one. What we want to do is help our body, whenever we can, make glutathione, the body's most powerful antioxidant. To do that, we need glutamine, glycine, and cysteine. So I've got samples of those here. Can we throw them all in and make glutathione? Does it matter how much we use? Does, do, do the ratios matter? They always matter. Unfortunately, most things, if you want to build glutathione, they just throw the kitchen sink at you and say, there you go, there's everything the research has ever said about building glutathione. Doesn't work that way in practice. Here are those three nutrients. We'll throw them all on and see what happens with the liver. It didn't help us. So let's do one at a time. Because often there's plenty of one type, cysteine or glycine or glutamine in the body, but not enough of one of the other two. Or two of them are good and we're missing one, something like that. So we, again, we've got teeter-totter imbalances. This is what we want to look for on a regular basis. How are our teeter-totters doing? So we'll take one of them. Here's cysteine. Cysteine didn't strengthen us. Here's glycine. Glycine looks pretty good. So we'll put that in the good pile. Remember, we'll do our stress test in a moment to see if it's the right one. And here's glutamine. And glutamine looks pretty good. Now, glutamine's a wonderful amino acid to help heal the small intestine. We already had an issue with the small intestine where we're now using a digestive enzyme. Uh, but there's a, there's a match. Glutamine helping the small intestine at the same time helping to make glutathione. So leave glutamine on. Check our color green. And it indeed does stay strong. We also had glycine looking good, so we'll put glycine on and stress with our color green. Touch our pep, and she doesn't stay strong. 
So glutamine, of the three that could help produce glutathione, glutamine looks the best. And it fits with the small intestine point that we already saw earlier. And so as well, if you see a nutrient that's starting to fit with other, a uh, nutrient that's fitting with different peps, it could go in either place. That's probably going to be one of your hormetic nutrients. It's going to be one of the ones that helps the most. So in her case, we found glutamine. But let's uh, check some other possibilities with the liver. So I'm going to take glutamine off, put it over here in the most likely category, because uh, we got lucky and we found it related to glutathione. What about sulfation? What about a need for sulfur of some sort? So everybody who has achy joints, who's over 50 years old, runs out and gets glucosamine with chondroitin and MSM. All of those are sulfurs. The liver loves sulfur. But so do the joints. So here was a sulfur. Didn't help us. When we find people have irritated joints, we almost always know there's going to be a liver issue. And we almost always know there's going to be a need for some form of sulfur. So if they're having trouble detoxifying their body and their liver has to utilize more sulfur than usual to detoxify certain chemicals, the joints aren't going to have as much as they need. And guess what? They're not going to repair in the nighttime like they're supposed to. Things are going to start to deteriorate, degenerate, and there's going, going to be a lot of inflammation in the joints. Find the right sulfur. The joints now have enough. The liver has the extra it needs to cleanse itself. And lo and behold, the joints start to feel better and the patient feels better energy-wise because you've detoxified them with the right sulfur. Here is MSM. No help for us. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if we don't find any sulfur with this patient because we already found glutamine and it did a great job and it turned off the, the PEP liver 14. So let's uh, try glucosamine sulfate. That looks good. So let's see if green is helpful for this patient. So green over the eye does not stress out glucosamine sulfate. So we have two things now that could be helpful. So I begin to get suspicious about her joints. I begin to wonder not only about the joints, but sulfur helps build all soft tissues. So how's elastin? How's collagen? Uh, how, are, how are these things that help us look young and stay wrinkle free? And we have a whole series of tests on those things on your DVD as well. Uh, but I'm, I'll demonstrate them here in just a moment. 